wanted to do a few excerpts from a book that most of you I'm sure are familiar with. This is Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease by Caldwell Esselstyn. And uh, there's just um, so much good stuff in here. The main thing I wanted to get to is how he treats fat. So I think uh, in some ways he's such a great resource because he really hones in on fat and the problem with fat in the diet. And it, it seems as though some of the arguments that meat eaters or conventional eaters still use against uh, vegan diets or vegetarian diets, it stems from the fact that many of them are really still pretty high in fat. And it's when you take the fat out that things really change dramatically. I mean, even uh, vegetarian and vegan diets, uh, you know, if they're relatively healthy, I, I would still argue that they're they're healthier than animal-based diets, uh, you know, to an extent. But um, but when you take the fat out, you take the plant-based fats out of the vegan or vegetarian diet, and you know, vegetarian of course, cheese, dairy, eggs, that that sort of thing, and then and then fats from those things the picture becomes quite a bit different. And I wanted to read this one particular excerpt, which I thought is so good. This is a, a paragraph on a page 108. Again, it's uh, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, Caldwell B. Esselstyn, Jr., M.D. Um, and he says here, uh, let's see, if the public adopted this approach to preventing disease, if, by the millions, Americans abandon their toxic diets, and learned a truly healthy approach to eating, we could largely limit all those diseases of nutritional extravagance. Strokes, hypertension, obesity, osteoporosis, and adult onset diabetes. Meanwhile, we would see a marked reduction in cancers of the breast, prostate, colon, rectum, uterus, and ovaries. And this is after he's gone into a lengthy explanation of why a heart disease is reversed and prevented by this diet. So so you've got heart disease, you've got strokes, hypertension, obesity, osteoporosis, adult onset diabetes, and we'd see a marked reduction in cancers of the breast, prostate, colon, rectum, uterus, and ovaries. So one of the reasons I wanted to highlight this is that he's citing here evidence he's come across through his own personal work with clients and then evidence he's read in, in studies that show that all of these illnesses are either reversed and uh, stopped or at least greatly improved upon by a low-fat vegan diet, um, you know, a whole foods low-fat vegan diet. And what I wanted to add to that is that what about all these di diseases that are not categorized in any of the ones that I've listed? And I wanted to allude to the principle that the body is a holistic system. So th this is a long list of diseases I've gone through. There's like, you know, 15 diseases, many of which are like the most prominent chronic diseases in American and even global culture. Um, now, if this many diseases are improved upon or totally reversed by this diet, what about diseases that wouldn't necessarily be thought of as nutritionally related. And that brings up a whole question in the first place. Is there any illness that is not nutritionally related? And of course, there is not. So nutrition is the fundamental principle behind health. And if, if it's true, and of course, uh, we have a respectable figure here in Dr. Esselstyn saying that it is true through his experience and through the studies that he's encountered, that all of these diseases are either reversed or uh, greatly improved upon by this diet, then that's a huge pointer, it's a huge flag telling us that this is a, a, a critical piece in health. When this many diseases are affected by this approach to health, it's a, it's a critical, essential piece of, of health. Now, to most of us, that's that's recognized. It's you know, it's in our face. We know it. We recognize it. But it's like there's this block within popular culture that does not yet recognize the simple truth of this. And to me, this paragraph 
as it lists all these diseases, and then you start to think about, well, if it can cure all these diseases, let's say, let's say you get rid of the potential for all these diseases in your body, what's going to happen to any other diseases that are not necessarily related to this? Um, one way to look at health is, you know, at a very fundamental level, the body is simply delivering nutrients to cells and eliminating waste from cells. You could say at the most basic level, this is how the human organism functions. Delivering nutrients to cells, eliminating waste. And the primary uh, principle, or at least one of the main principles behind all these illnesses, is fat. So the fat's getting in the system and clogging up this process of delivering nutrients and eliminating waste. So you pull the fat out and you, you totally uh, prime the system. You, you enable the system to operate efficiently. You enable nutrients to be delivered and waste to be removed. And of course, you know, quality nutrients are going to make the organism run at a higher level. So, so that's number one. And, and as we all know, the best nutrients come from whole plant foods uh, in their simple forms and uh, the, a diet of this nature does not include processed fats and processed sugars and uh, you know processed food in general and it has a high quantity of raw fresh organic if possible foods so anyway just to, just kind of trying to to take another notch out of this public concept or this public construct uh, in the public mind that that doesn't recognize the breadth of the benefits of this diet. You know, it's just tremendous. It's so far reaching. It, it can get into so many aspects of health. And this, this classical tendency, this kind of deeply embedded tendency within conventional medicine to diversify and specify and have doctors who specialize in this and doctors who specialize in that. So I can go to a dermatologist and they think it has nothing to do with diet. You know, dermatological problems have nothing to do with diet. Go to a heart specialist. They don't think, I mean, hopefully most of them now recognize it has something to do with diet. But, you know, it's amazing. I think, I think I don't know if it was this book or another one, but uh, there was some, I think it was a Dr. Schwartz who was the head of one of these cancer organizations in 2009, stated flat out there's no relationship between diet and, and uh, cancer. I mean, to have somebody in 2009 saying that is totally absurd. So what we really need is more of, like what Esselstyn's saying, and then the kind of the the the, uh, the consequence of that recognition that diet plays an integral integral role in all aspects of health, and so that all diseases all diseases will be affected beneficially by getting your diet down to its as close as possible to your most natural most uh, you know the highest quality diet possible. So anyway. Uh, Kind of going on and on there. I apologize, but um, I just think it's it's uh, it's critical. You got to find a way to deliver this message. And uh, you, you know, it amazes me. It's like Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton follows Esselstyn, and that's how he came out of the danger of heart disease. And I mean, the guy. Look at the guy now compared to what he was before he had his surgery. I mean, it's like a, a 360 degree revolution. It's just you know he's a totally different person. And uh, if we could get someone at a at the high political level promoting this in schools in terms of um, agricultural subsidies uh, in terms of educating the public in terms of the way uh, hospitals are run uh, we could just transform the society we could transform the society not only in terms of health individual personal you know health but also of course in terms of all the corollaries uh, environment, ethics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So anyway, uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for letting me rant a little bit. Classic, wonderful book. Uh, also, one other point I wanted to make on this. You know, this uh, this book, the copyright date in this is 2007. 2007. Here we are, 2014. Right? Getting getting ready to close out 2014. That's seven years. Seven years. The last statistic I saw for heart disease uh, was. 600,000 deaths 
related to heart disease every year in the United States alone. So let's say, let's do an average, let's say 500,000 going back seven years. That's that's uh, three and a half million people in seven years. This book was written in 2007, and since that date, three and a half million plus deaths related to heart disease. Three and a half million. That's over half of the Holocaust. Three and a half million deaths. That's insane. So, and my point with that is, you know, this book written in 2007, this should be. This should be like basic. Uh, this should be basic required reading for all medical students. It should be the first thing they get, especially folks who you know who are going to specialize in heart disease or um, you know all of the diseases that we know: diabetes, cancer, anything that that's uh, chronic and related to diet. So anyway, uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.